There are few men as renowned in the cycling world as the legendary Gary Fisher. He defined many aspects of modern cycling and was a revolutionary, specifically in the world of mountain biking. At the age of 12, Gary Fisher embarks on his journey into competitive road and track cycling, participating in races organized by the precursor to the USCF, the Amateur Bicycle League of America. In 1964, Gary stumbles upon cyclocross, engaging in five races within the discipline. His prowess shines as he secures a commendable second place position in the intermediate age group during the Northern California District Road Championships. In 1968, Gary faced a suspension from bike racing due to his excessively long hair. Undeterred, he channels his creativity into crafting home-built equipment and initiates a dazzling light show named The Lightest Show on Earth. This captivating spectacle graced the stages of San Francisco's prominent rock venues. With the repeal of the long hair rule in 1972, Gary resumed his participation in road racing. Securing a second place finish in the Tour of Nevada City in 1973, Gary ascends to the status of a Category 1 USCF road racer. In 1974, after completing the Vuelta de Baja, the Tour of the Sierras, and the Tour of Marin Stage Races, Gary set out to craft his legendary Schwinn Excelsior X. Boasting an unprecedented wide gear range and heavy duty braking system, this off-road bike defies its 42 pound weight, proving itself rideable both uphill and downhill. Gary pioneered innovations such as tandem drum brakes, thumb shifters, motorcycle brake levers, cables, a seat post quick release, and triple train rings with extra long crank arms. Recognized for its groundbreaking features, Gary's original mountain bike creation earns a spot as one of the top 10 all-time best mountain bikes by Mountain Bike Action Magazine. In 1976, after Gary secures a glorious victory, triumphing in the Tour of Klamath Lake, a challenging 125 Olympic development race, he claims the 12th position in the National Road Championships in a collaborative effort with his roommate, Charlie Kelly. Gary plays a pivotal role in organizing the Repack Off-Road Downhill Race Series. Additionally, Gary ventures into the realm of journalism, initiating a monthly road test article for Bicycling Magazine. In 1977, Gary establishes an enduring Repack record, clocking in at an impressive 4 hours, 22 minutes, and 14 seconds. This record, set by Gary, remains unbroken to this day. In other notable achievements, he secured a fifth place finish in the National Cyclocross Championships and heroically completed the challenging Red Zinger stage race in Colorado. In 1978, Gary earns the prestigious Fastest Time of the Year accolade for his triumph in the repacked downhill race. Demonstrating his endurance, he clinches victory in the solo division of the 209 miles Davis Double Century, boasting the fastest overall time of 9 hours and 18 minutes. Adding to his list of accomplishments, Gary successfully completes the Red Zinger stage race. Notably, he contributes to the Marin County contingent, playing a role in introducing the clunker to Colorado riding. In 1979, Gary Fisher and Charlie Kelly christened their newly founded company as Mountain Bikes. The construction of frames for the bikes is skillfully undertaken by Jeffrey Richmond and Tom Ritchie. Kelly and Fisher take charge of various aspects, including purchasing, assembly, marketing, shipping, sales, and catalog design. A total of 160 Mountain Bikes are manufactured and successfully sold. Amidst these entrepreneurial endeavors, Gary accomplishes the Coors Classic stage race, accumulating crucial Olympic development points that position him at an impressive third place in Western Division road racing. In 1980, 
Gary clinches victories in the inaugural Reseda to the Sea, the Central Coast Clunker Classic, and the Whiskey Town downhill off-road races, securing the second position in the Northern California District Cyclocross Championships, all accomplished on his mountain bike. Additionally, he successfully completes the Challenging Coors Classic stage race. Pioneering innovations, Gary introduced the term bull moose handlebar and became the first to incorporate a Shimano free hub and bear trap pedals on a mountain bike. Collaborating with Charlie Kelly, Gary takes charge of editing the bicycle section of the last whole earth catalog. In 1981, after securing victory in the second Reseda to Sea off-road race, Gary continues to make his mark, demonstrating his support for women's cycling. Fisher sponsors a women's team in the Coors Classic stage race. In 1982, Gary emerges triumphant in the inaugural Rock Hopper off-road race, laying the groundwork for Fisher riders to clinch the subsequent six victories. Further showcasing his prowess, Gary secures a win at the Paradise Divide Criterium in Crested Butte, Colorado. In 1983, Gary innovates and christens the Unicrown Fork. In a display of Fisher team success, racer Dale Statina triumphs in the Paradise Divide stage race. As a founding member of the National Off-Road Bicycling Association, otherwise known as NORBA, Gary assembles a formidable team featuring Dale Statina, Eric Hyden, Joe Murray, Tom Ritchie, and John Lomas for the inaugural national championships. Lomas secures the top Fisher finish, claiming third place. Pioneering advancements, Fisher unveils the first production bike equipped with a brake under the chainstay. Gary introduces shorter chainstays and steeper seat angles, revolutionizing mountain bikes. Venturing to France, he introduces the mountain bike and competes in downhill racing in the La Plaine Alps. In 1984, Gary pioneers the creation of a new mountain bike, crafted with the Tange Prestige tubing. Racing under the Fisher banner, Joe Murray secures victories in the Whiskey Town Rock Hopper Ross Stage Race, Pacific States Final, and the Norba National Championships. The Fisher team dominates the off-road scene, claiming triumph in 70% of all races. Notably, the Fisher Excalibur stands out as the first production mountain bike featuring a Dura Ace free hub, toe clips, and straps. In 1985, Fisher team riders collaborate with Shimano to pioneer index shifting. Gary introduces the innovative measurements like standover height and effective top tube length to enhance the description of off road frame fit. Joe Murray, a Fisher racer, not only repeats his victories in the Whiskey Town Rock Copper, Raw Stage Race, and Norba National Championships, but also travels to England to secure a third place finish in the Man vs. Horse vs. Bike Race. In 1986, initiating a grassroots racing team, Fisher establishes the world's largest off road racing team. Gary transfers the Marne Mountain Bike's name to Bob Buckley. Furthering his contributions to the cycling world, Gary pioneers the bulge bar, introduces the hip stay featuring a super short chain stay, and advocates for 135mm over lock nut rear hub spacing. In 1987, Sarah Ballantyne, a member of the Fisher team, secures a gold medal in the Norba World Cross Country Championships, while Fisher's Mike Clauser claims of silver in the men's event. Fisher Pro Caliber earns recognition as one of the top 10 all-time best mountain bikes, according to Mountain Bike Action Magazine. Additionally, Gary is honored by Outside Magazine, being named among the 50 who have left their mark in the last 10 years. In 1988, introducing the Fisher CR7, a collaborative effort merging Gary's renowned frame design with Richard Cunningham's expertise in aluminum and chrome molly fabrication. Notable achievements by Fisher racers include Mike Clauser and Sarah Ballantyne's victories in the I Did a Bike 200 mile snow race in Alaska and the European World Off Road Championships. The titanium Fisher Prometheus earns acclaim as 
Bicycle Guide Magazine's Best of 88. Gary Fisher is honored with the induction at the inaugural Mountain Bike Hall of Fame in Crested Butte. Additionally, in a tandem endeavor with Sarah Ballantyne, Gary secures victory in the tandem category and an impressive 13th overall placement in the 150-mile Desert to the Sea race. In 1989, Gary pioneered the Evolution headset, tubing, and seat post, marking the inception of the first oversized component system designed specifically for off-road bikes. Sarah Ballantyne, a Fisher rider, clinches her third world championship. Recognizing excellence, Bicycle Guide magazine names the Fisher Gemini tandem as the best of 89, while Bicycle Dealers Showcase acknowledges Fisher as a top supplier for the same year. Additionally, Fisher makes its foray into hybrid bicycles with the production of its first model. In 1990, Gary secures a position on the Norba Board of Trustees. His joint effort with Mert Lawmill on the RS1 full suspension bike wins the prestigious Hot Bike Award from Bicycling Magazine. Notably, the Fisher Mount Tan becomes the inaugural production mountain bike featuring a front suspension fork, rock shocks, and suspension ready geometry. In 1991, Fisher initiates its global mountain bike team comprising world champions Albert Eiden and Walter Brandy from Switzerland and Paola Pezzo and Paola Rosola from Italy. Gary introduces a groundbreaking feature with 15.5 chain stays on the Monterre. In 1992, Gary collaborates with Torre of Japan to create the Alembic carbon fiber suspension bike. In 1993, in April, the Gary Fisher Bicycle Company was acquired by Trek Bicycle Corporation, with Gary leading the product group that expeditiously launched a new product line introduced in August. Meanwhile, Fisher rider Paola Pezzo from Italy secures victory in the UCI World Mountain Bike Championship in France. In 1994, the union of Gary Fisher thrives and the Fisher brand experiences remarkable success, being present in over 500 locations across the United States and distributed in more than 20 countries globally. Smithsonian Magazine bestows upon Gary the title of the founding father of mountain bikes. In a memorious recognition, Gary is honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Corbell Knight of Champions, considering the cycling equivalent of the Academy Awards. In 1996, Paola Pezzo, a Team Fisher rider, secures the gold medal in the women's mountain bike event at the Atlanta Olympic Games. Gary achieves a re-election to the Norba Board of Trustees, receiving the highest number of votes among all trustees. Recognized for his contributions, Gary is honored as the Product Manager of the Year by Mountain Bike Magazine. The Fisher brand emerges as the fastest growing bicycle brand in the USA. Gary introduces the Joshua a dual suspension bike featuring a simple oval alloy tube, Y-shape, that becomes the most replicated bike design of the 90s. In 1997, Fisher launches a BMX team and unveils 10 BMX models, featuring a Joshua-inspired Aluminum Pro issue team frame. Paola Pezzo exhibits exceptional prowess in the women's XC field riding her Genesis Geometry bicycle to victory in 8 out of 10 UCI races, clinching both the overall championship and the world championship title. Gary makes a triumphant return to racing, securing victory in the cross-country masters category at the U.S. National Championships in his first year back, earning a coveted spot on the U.S. Masters team. Recognizing his commitment, Gary is appointed to the board of directors for Trips for Kids. In 1998, Fisher unveils significant advancements in mountain bike frame design, highlighting the continuous possibilities with the introduction of the unyielding Genesis geometry. Gary secures victory in the Masters category alongside teammate Jim Gentiles during the Trans Alp 8 day off road stage race in Europe. Velo News recognizes Gary's remarkable contributions, naming him one of the top 25 mountain bike racers of all time. 
1999, racer Michael Rasmussen from the Gary Fisher mountain bike team clinches victory in the Men's Cross Country World Championship in Sweden. Paola Pezzo achieves a historic milestone as the first woman to secure a World Cup race on a dual suspension mountain bike, triumphing in St. Wendel, Germany, aboard a new Fisher dual suspension. In recognition of her outstanding contributions, Paola Pezzo is honored with an induction into the Mountain Bike Hall of Fame. In 2000, Fisher unveils the Sugar Line, offering a full suspension platform that balances being wide enough for professional racing and having a full suspension frame. Mary Grigson, a newcomer to the Gary Fisher mountain bike team, secures victory in the U.S. Norva Series. In a remarkable display of Fisher's influence, four Fisher Olympians participated in the Sydney Olympic Games, with Pezzo clinching her second gold medal. In 2001, Gary Fisher collaborates with Subaru to form the Subaru Gary Fisher mountain bike team. The team asserts its dominance on the mountain bike circuit, concluding the season atop the U.S. rankings. Mary Grigson adds to her accolades by securing another Norma title. Gary Fisher himself remains active in racing, making appearances at events such as the 24 Hours of Moab. In 2002, Gary Fisher once again disrupts the mountain bike industry by unveiling the Fisher 29-inch wheeled mountain bikes. The 2.9er proves that the hardtail is still very much alive and open to further improvements. After all, why should mountain bike wheels be limited to 26 inches? In 2003, 2.9er gets the green light. Gary effectively advocates for the UCI to permit 29-inch wheels in racing. Gary Fisher persists in revolutionizing mountain biking, launching the Gary Fisher Sugar 29 line, featuring full suspension 29-inch wheel bikes. Ryder Hesiodal makes history as the first professional athlete to participate in a Norba championship race in Idaho riding a 29er. Gary tirelessly committed, travels year-round working harder than ever to spread the joy of cycling worldwide. In 2004, Cake stands out as the lightest 5-inch travel mountain bike on the trails. Gary Fisher Bicycles has made significant investments into engineering and industrial design resources in the past year. From front to back, Cake is meticulously crafted to be ultra-light, exceptionally robust, and incredibly efficient. Achieving the pinnacle of mountain biking, Cake effortlessly conquers steep ascents and navigates rugged trails with confidence. The induction of the 29er Dual Sport marks a milestone, creating the most versatile mountain bike to date. The ACDC is unveiled to support team riders in the pursuit of Olympic gold at the 2004 Olympic Games in Greece. This precise Olympic frame transitions into a stock model following the year. In 2005, Biggins makes its debut, the ultimate free ride, dirt jump, and urban bike with an unmatched kick. Gary, sporting shin pads and a lowered seat, fearlessly takes it to the trails in Whistler for the grand unveiling. Gary dedicates efforts to refine the highly acclaimed cake, celebrated across the industry as one of the top all mountain bikes. He continues championing the 29er cause by introducing new mountain bikes like the Rig, a single speed with large wheels. The Sugar concludes its remarkable five-year reign as a leading full suspension mountain bike. Adding to his joy, Gary welcomes his third child, Miles Finn Fisher. In 2006, Gary maintains his dominance in the realm of full suspension bikes. The birth of the Fat Possum marks a new era. A lightweight, all-mountain bike boasting six inches of travel. The Subaru Gary Fisher race team strategically enlists double U.S. national champion Jeremy Horgan Kobelski, who plays a key role in developing the race day full suspension cross-country bike. Building on the success of the Sugar platform, the race day refines Fisher's trusted single pivot design, creating an even lighter and more efficient bike. In the late summer, Fisher introduces yet another full suspension platform with the high thigh recognized as the lightest 5-inch travel bike on the market. In 2007, 
Fisher remains at the forefront of advancing 29ers. The introduction of Genesis 2.0 geometry, tailored specifically for larger wheels, addresses the prevalent criticism of sluggish handling in 29ers, effectively resolving this issue. The once niche appeal of 29ers expands, making them more accessible to a broader audience. Experienced riders find an improvement in their balance, while new riders appreciate the stability offered by these bikes. In 2008, Gary Fisher skillfully navigates the space between a trail bike and an all mountain bike with the Roscoe. Rapidly gaining acclaim, the Roscoe becomes the media darling of the season earning enthusiastic reviews from various outlets. Bike Magazine bestows upon it the prestigious title of 2009 Gear of the Year. In a nostalgic return to his roots, Gary Fisher introduces a line of road wheels. Having initially embarked on his cycling journey on the road with the Velo Tam Club, Gary took a detour into inventing mountain bikes. Now nearly three dec decades later, Fisher road bikes make their debut bringing the promise of Fisher's innovative spirit to the road.